They journeyed on till they came to a vast open plain, wherein they saw a great castle, which was the fairest in the world. But so far away was it that it might have seemed no nearer, and they scarcely reached it on the third day. When they came before the castle they beheld a vast flock of sheep, boundless and without end. They told their errand to the herdsmen, who endeavored to dissuade them since none who had come thither on that quest had returned alive. They gave to him a gold ring, which he conveyed to his wife, telling her who the visitors were. On the approach of the latter, she ran out with joy to greet them, and sought to throw her arms about their necks. But Kay, snatching a billet out of the pile, placed the log between her two hands, and she squeezed it so that it became a twisted coil. O oh, woman, said Kay, if thou hadst squeezed me thus, None could ever again have set their affections on me. Evil love were this. They entered the house, and after meat she told them that the maiden Owen came there every Saturday to Washington. They pledged their faith that they would not harm her, and a message was sent to her. So Owen came, clothed in a robe of flame-colored silk, and with a collar of ruddy gold, in which were emeralds and rubies, about her neck. More golden was her hair than the flower of the broom, and her skin was whiter than the foam of the wave, and fairer were her hands and her fingers than the blossoms of the wood anemone amidst the spray of the meadow fountain. Brighter were her glances than those of a falcon, her bosom was more snowy than the breast of the white swan, her cheek redder than the reddest roses, whoso beheld was filled with her love. For white trefoils sprang up wherever she trod, and therefore was she called Darwin. Then Kyluch, sitting beside her on a bench, told her his love, and she said that he would win her as his bride if he granted whatever her father asked. Accordingly they went up to the castle and laid their request before him. Raise up the forks beneath my two eyebrows which have fallen over my eyes. Said Stephen Pincor, that I may see the fashion of my son-in-law. They did so, and he promised them an answer on the morrow. But as they were going forth, Stephen seized one of the three poison darts that lay beside him and threw it back after them. And Bedley caught it and flung it back, wounding Stephen on the knee. Then said he, Cursed on gentle son-in-law, truly, I shall ever walk the worse for his rudeness. This poisoned iron pains me like the bite of a gadfly. Cursed be the smith who forged it, and the anvil whereon it was wrought. The knights rested in the house of custom and the herdsmen, but the next day at dawn they returned to the castle and renewed their request. Stephen said it was necessary that he should consult the ruling of Alan. Illustration 1.png All rooms for great grandmothers and their four great grandsires. The knights again withdrew, and as they were going, they took the second dart and cast it after them. But men caught it and flung it back, piercing Stephen's breast with it, so that it came out at the small of his back. A cursed on gentle son in law, truly, says he, a hard iron pains me like the bite of a horse leech. Cursed be the hearth whereon it is heated. Henceforth, whenever I go up a hill, I shall have a skin in my breath and a pain in my chest. On the third day the knights returned once more to the palace, and Stephen took the third dart and cast it at them. The Kyluch caught it and threw it vigorously, and wounded him through the eyeball, so that the dart came out at the back of his head. A cursed on gentle son-in-law, truly, as long as I remain alive my eyesight will be the worse. Whenever I go against the wind my eyes will water and peradventure my head will burn, and I shall have a giddiness every new moon. Cursed be the fire in which it was forged, like the bite of a mad dog is the stroke of this poisoned iron. And they went to meet, said Pithin Pincor, Is it thou that seekest my daughter? It is I, answered Kyluch, I must have thy pledge that thou wilt not do towards me otherwise than is just. And when I have gotten that which I shall name, my daughter thou shalt have. I promise thee that willingly, said Kyluch. Name what thou wilt, I will do so, said he. Throughout the world there is not a comb or scissors with which I can arrange my hair, on account of its rankness, except the comb and scissors that are between the two ears of Church Truth, the son of Prince Ter. He will not give them of his own fruit.